The time has come for the final video in this Kaplan 500 top GRE words. And let's find out what words we're going to learn today. Starting with coterie, meaning an intimate group of persons with a similar purpose. I would think of it as like your inner circle, your clique, your coterie, a small inner circle, a small group of people that all like the same things, maybe hang out or maybe like a coterie or clique in a company that all gather together and conspire. Essentially a clique, an inner circle, a coterie. Credulous, too trusting, gullible, giving things too much credit, usually other people. Oh, you believe everything she says. You're far too credulous, far too gullible. Craven, lacking courage. Craven is a pejorative, it's an insult. It's essentially the equivalent of saying, you coward, you are craven. A craven apology, a cowardly apology. Lacking courage. Cupidity, greed, strong desire. Obviously we know about the arrows of Cupid to set up love and desire. So cupidity is linked about strong desire, greed for something having tremendous cupidity, tremendous greed and yearning for that thing. Cupidity. Debutant, great word. Or if you want to pronounce it in the French way, debutant. Young woman making a, her debut in high society. A debut is like an introduction, your first appearance. So for a football or soccer team, a new player starts, that's their debut, that's their first appearance. A debutant is particularly a woman who's making her first formal appearance as a lady in society. Obviously a slightly formal, archaic word now, but you can still use it. She was a debutante at the company, a newcomer, making her entrance. Salient. Great word to know. Prominent of notable significance. It's really salient that you use that word. Really noticeable, interesting that you use that word. I noticed one salient feature about his face, his incredible nose. One prominent feature, one notable feature, one salient feature. Prominent, noticeable, significant. Prattle, lovely word. Meaningless, foolish talk. Could come up in the GRE. Oh, he was just prattling on, not saying much, making small talk. To prattle or prattling, meaningless talk, silly chit chat. Usually someone uses that word in a self-derogatory way, putting themselves down. Oh, I'm just prattling. I'm just chatting. Prattle. Precipitate. I've done this in other videos. To throw violently or bring about abruptly, lacking deliberation. So there's lots of different words involving this precipitate. You could say precipitation is rain. To precipitate something is what they're referring to here to essentially cause it to happen suddenly. Her words precipitated a violent upheaval. His callous remark precipitated many astonished comments, caused or brought things about abruptly. And then there's the noun, precipitate, which is like rain, for example. Often, if you describe something as precipitate, which brings something about suddenly, you're also implying that you think that thing lack deliberation. The person didn't think about it too much when they said it. Maybe someone says a small remark that causes an argument. Well, you could say that remark precipitated the argument. It brought it about because the remark wasn't thought through. Precipitate. Pressy. A short summary of facts. Notice it's not pronounced precise or precis. It's pressy. French again. It's just a summary, a synopsis, a short Summary of the facts. Fancy word often used in business circles. Just give me a pressy, give me a short summary. Judicious. Sensible, showing good judgment. You can think of it as what would a judge do? That would be judicious. Oh, that's wise, that's sensible. You've got good judgment. That was a judicious choice. Wise, prudent. Intransigent. Dealt with this before. Uncompromising. Opposite of being transigent. If someone's intransigent, they refuse to be reconciled, they're stubborn, they're obstinate, they're obdurate. All different synonyms here. Uncompromising, not changing their mind, not being malleable. 
intransigent. Insipid, lacking interest or flavor. I drank the cocktail, but truly it's insipid, really boring, lacking any flavor, not wanna have it again, basically. Invidious, great word. Envious, obnoxious or offensive, likely to promote ill will. Her comments were invidious. Ill thought through, offensive, and they're gonna stir up a lot of hate or annoyance. They were truly invidious comments. Awkward, unpleasant, unfair, invidious. Investiture, investiture, a ceremony conferring authority. Maybe when a bishop is consecrated or any grand office holder is given their office, given their robes, maybe given their official titles, that is an investiture. They have been invested with that role, that title, that responsibility. Fairly formal word, investiture. Inure, more common, to harden, to become accustomed, to become used to. She used to react strongly to the comments, but now she was just inured to it. Bored of it, accustomed to it, hardened to it. Or perhaps you could say she's become thick-skinned about it. Hardened, accustomed, inured. Imprecation, uncommon word, a curse. This is at the edge of my knowledge, but I do know to imprecate someone is to curse them. So it makes sense that an imprecation is the noun, it's a curse. Less common though. Imprecate or imprecation, curse or a curse. Pallid, lacking color or liveliness. Easy way to remember this is pallid, sounds a bit like pale, lacks color, lacks liveliness. A pallid painting portrayed a mundane and despairing environment. Pallid. Panache, wonderful word, best one so far. Flamboyance, dash, style, charisma, action, verve. His actions were full of panache. The way she rebranded that company was just full of panache, full of style, flamboyance, boldness, verve, action. And it's great because the word fits the meaning, right? The word sounds quite bold and flamboyant, panache. Opposite of pallid, really. Pallid is lacking liveliness. Panache is full of liveliness and boldness. Abeyance. Temporary suppression or suspension. Her cancer is in abeyance. It's temporarily suppressed, but it might come back. Panegyric. Elaborate praise, formal hymn of praise. A bit like the word eulogy. You're praising someone elaborately with a panegyric. A fancy word for eulogy, a panegyric of praise. At their 30th anniversary, he offered his wife a panegyric in celebration of her achievements. Castigate, the opposite, to punish or criticize harshly, not a panegyric of praise, to castigate someone is to harshly criticize them. More so criticize than punish, I think. She was castigated for her terrible errors, criticized harshly. Panoply, I love this word, I learned it as a child, an impressive array. It used to be like a panoply of armor that a knight would wear, a huge array of it. But metaphorically, you could use it for anything. A panoply of fireworks, an impressive array of fireworks. Panoply, lovely word to pronounce as well. Bonhomie, <laughs> great word again. A lot of these are French words, I think. Good natured geniality, an atmosphere of good cheer. At the pub, there was a wonderful sense of bonhomie. Good humans, I think, maybe from French. Bon homme, I don't know. A good atmosphere, geniality, friendliness, bon homme. Everyone's getting on. A great atmosphere. Paragon. The model of excellence or perfection. She was a paragon of virtue, full of integrity and scruples. Or he was a paragon of hard work. He excelled from the start by working hard. The model to emulate. Excellence, perfection, paragon. A bore, a crude person, one lacking manners or taste. Not necessarily someone who is boring, that's a different word. A bore is maybe crude, maybe they burp a lot at the table, say vulgar jokes, they just lack manners, they lack taste. Oh, he's such a bore. B-O-O-R, not B-O-R-E, which means boring. Burgeon, to grow and flourish. Come work at our burgeoning company. It's growing, it's flourishing, it's got a bright future, full of potential. Maelstrom, lovely word. 
formerly a whirlpool, a turmoil, like uh, in the sea, if you have a maelstrom, it means like a typhoon or a sweeping mass of water. But you can have, more metaphorically, a maelstrom in your mind, an agitated state of mind where you can't focus on anything. Chaotic, full of turmoil. It can be literally a maelstrom in the sea, a whirlpool, or metaphorically, any state of great turmoil or chaos. Maelstrom. Magnate. Powerful or influential person. He was a steel magnate, someone who had amassed billions of dollars from working in the steel industry, becoming a CEO maybe. Or you often hear the phrase, she was married to a shipping magnate, a powerful, very rich, usually billionaire these days. Magnate. Malediction. A curse, a wish of evil upon another. You know about the word valediction, which is to say goodbye to someone? Well, a malediction is to wish evil. Mal is bad, which is where you get the words like malignant and maleficent. So a malediction is a bad, like we saw earlier, an imprecation, a curse, a wish of evil upon another. Two words for the price of one there. Mannered. Artificial or stilted in character. Obsessing over mannerisms, decorum, making them a bit artificial, stilted, fake, not genuine, maybe a bit too formal. Some of the waiters here are a bit too mannered, let's be honest. Mannered. Martinet. A strict disciplinarian, one who rigidly follows rules. I keep seeing this word, looking up the definition, remembering it, and then next time I forget it again. So I need to learn it. So Martinet is someone who is a strict disciplinarian, one who rigidly follows the rules. So a martinet is someone who imposes the rules harshly and rigidly. Maybe like a principal or a headmistress who's a stickler for the rules. Draconian is a linked word there. Martinet. Catholic. Universal, broad and comprehensive. Obviously you're thinking of the denomination of Christianity, Catholic Church. But the word Catholic itself can be an adjective just meaning universal, covering everything and everyone. We try to be Catholic in our intake, allowing anyone from any background to come. Catholic. Pair. To trim off the excess, to reduce. Let's pare down on waste in this company. We waste too much money. Let's trim off the excess, reduce it, pare it down. Pair. Caustic. Biting in wit. Her caustic remarks cause a lot of pain. Sarcastic, biting, sharp. Cabal. A secret group seeking to overturn something. So earlier we saw coterie was like an inner circle, a clique. But a cabal is more sinister. They're definitely conspiring to do something evil. That horrible cabal took over the company and fired everyone. A secret group seeking to take over or overturn something, a cabal. Maudlin, overly sentimental, a bit weepy, lacrimose, causing tears all the time. Oh, that's a Maudlin movie. I wouldn't watch it, too sentimental. Mendacious, dishonest. Opposite of voracious, meaning truthful. Mendacious means lying or dishonest. That mendacious individual is always telling lies. Mendicant, quite different. That's a beggar, a fancy word for saying someone who's seeking alms, seeking money, someone on the street who is begging. They are a mendicant, fancy a word of beggar. Mercurial, quick, shrewd, and unpredictable. A bit like the word capricious, someone who is mercurial is hard to predict. You don't know what they're gonna do next. But whereas capricious is a slightly more insulting word, oh, she's just capricious, she can't make up her mind. If you describe someone as mercurial, you're saying it with a slight smile. Like, yeah, you never know what she's gonna do next. She's really shrewd, cunning. So it's a slightly more of a praising word than capricious, which is a bit more of an attack. All of these words, if you look into the etymology of them, you'll see the nuances and subtleties that differentiate the words. So when I say one word's a synonym for another, usually there are slight differences you can surmise by looking up the etymology or origin of the words. 
no two words are identical. Well, it's probably a couple of words that are identical, but not many. Meretricious, gaudy, falsely attractive, seeming to have merit, but not. It's meretricious, falsely attractive. It doesn't have merit. It's gaudy, showy, but it's actually rubbish. It's meretricious. Lovely word. Definitely could come up. Ingratiate. To gain favour with another by deliberate effort. To seek to please somebody so as to gain an advantage. He's just trying to ingratiate himself into this family so he can marry her and gain lots of money. Or he's just seeking to ingratiate himself with your father because he wants to work for him. Trying to please someone but with the aim of trying to get in a group or gain esteem for your own advantage. To ingratiate yourself. To be obsequious maybe so that people like you and then you get something for your advantage. Interesting word, ingratiate. Insurrection, a rebellion. That's an easy one. To lead an insurrection is to lead a rebellion against the established authority. Insurrection. Prescient, having foresight. A bit like the word perspicacious. Someone who's smart and has foresight. Similarly, prescient. Pre is before, science or science is knowledge. So therefore, to have some knowledge before is to be prescient, to see things coming. Prevaricate. To lie or deviate from the truth. A bit like the phrase to hedge your bets or to beat around the bush. You're not being totally straightforward and clear. Not necessarily always lying, just not saying the truth in a clear way. You're prevaricating. Just spit it out. Be honest. Prevaricate. Inter. To bury, that's a simple one. Did you attend the interring of the body? Did you attend the burial? To inter something is to bury it, usually a corpse. Imbue, to infuse, dye, wet or moisten. So technically, yes, it's dyeing, wetting, moistening something, but imbuing you can use a lot more metaphorically. He was imbued with great wisdom, infused with it, filled with it. Or don't imbue her remarks with too much meaning. Don't give them too much meaning. She didn't mean anything. To invest something, to infuse something, to imbue it with something. To imbue. Impecunious. <laughs> Wonderful word. Poor, having no money. Remember from a previous video, we talked about penury, meaning poverty. Well, similarly, impecunious means poor, having no money. Ah, oh, she ended up impecunious after the bankruptcy. Impervious, quite different. Impossible to penetrate. The walls of that fortress are truly impervious. You will never get through. You cannot penetrate them. It's impregnable. Impervious. I am impervious to your insults. They don't affect me at all. Impious. Not devout. So to be pious or full of piety in saintliness and devotion, religiousness. If you are impious and don't have piety, you are not devout in religion. So you could call a crude or vulgar remark impious, lacking piety. Incarnadine. This is a new word for me, which is crazy given it's the 499th word in this list. Incarnadine, blood red in colour. I guess that kind of fits because isn't carnation like a red flower? I'm not quite sure. Incarnadine, blood red in colour. The incarnadine sunset. I like it. Well, time for our final word. What's it going to be? Indolent. What a strange way to end the list. Indolent. Do you know what it means? Habitually lazy or idle. I really hope I haven't been indolent in creating this 10 video playlist for your benefit. I really hope I haven't been lazy or idle. So let's cast away indolence. I know you have because you've finished 10 of these videos, so you're definitely not indolent. Thank you for getting to the end of this list with me. And hopefully you've learned over the course of this video series, dozens or maybe even hundreds of new words. That would be amazing. Please do let me know. As I said in the previous video, I'm aiming to do a massive new vocab list on the economist word list. So that's coming up soon. Have a wonderful day.